friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. Now for something completely different. I think this would fall under the heading of shop improvement. See this? Well, that's dangling from up above, and you can tell what it is. It's a vacuum. I made this to close it at this end when I'm not using it. <laughs> so, a very simple way to close it. It's hanging from my vacuum system, which were, is in the other part of the shop. I extended it into my office because I'm always needing a vacuum in here, and I wanted something that I could just bring down real easy, real fast, and do it rather than bringing, to, toting in a whole vacuum cleaner or even using these little portable things. They're good, but they're just not that good. And so it, it would just be nice because I have a wireless remote and all I have to do is push the button and it goes on immediately. It's just awesome. So I turn it back off, no problem. Okay, now the problem is what do I do with this mess? Well, I first thought about just hanging it up on some hooks and just standing up and grabbing it and pulling it down, which would work sort of. But I need it up pretty high to get it out of my way because when I'm standing instruments up and everything, I don't want this in my way. So I want to take it up there pretty high and get it out of my way. And the only way to do that, because these are 10 foot high ceilings at least, you know, I can't reach it. So I need some way to hoist it up. And I, that either means a hand crank or something. And I don't have time for hand cranks. So, idea. What I really wanted to do was just buy some cheap winch, you know, with a little light wire and up and down. I can't find one. Now, you guys will probably find me one as soon as I mention that. But I couldn't find one. I searched and searched and searched, and I couldn't find one that suited me. I mean, I could find them and fairly inexpensive, 50 60 you know, dollars, that kind of thing. But they just didn't suit my needs. I really wanted it to be a wireless remote or a remote at least that would be long enough to reach all the way up there and all the way back down here to my table. And most of those remotes aren't that long. So here goes what I'm doing. You see this old drill? Well, it's just an old beater drill. It doesn't, it doesn't even have variable speed. It's that old. And it's an old electric drill. As you can see, I've already modified it. What I did was, you notice there's no trigger. There's no trigger and there's no uh, reversing lever there. Well, that's all because that's right here. So all I did was, I just took this apart and I cut the wires that go to this switch, all four wires, and I just extended all four wires 12 feet. That's all I did. It still has its original plug. It was always a short plug like this. It was always intended to be plugged into an extension cord. It's just a crummy design anyway. That's one of the reasons I never used it. The other reason is because it's not variable speed. Now, variable speed would be very handy for this winch deal. I know that. But this is what I have, and I'm going to find a way to make this work. So what I plan to do is mount this up in the ceiling and have this remote control switch down here you know, uh, direct it up and down and lift my hose up out of my way. All I do is I'm going to have that switch mounted right here to my table, right down in here somewhere, and I just push the button and the hose comes down and I flip the lever and push it and it goes back up, you know, that kind of thing. That's the goal. If it doesn't work, you'll never see this video anyway. <laughs> so here we go. So what I've already started doing, I've already extended the, this switch 12 feet. So now I've, I've just put together this little tiny wooden box, and so far all I've done is super glued it together, just kind of a prototype deal, but yet I'll probably use this box if it works. And I've got it where it's very tight going down in there. The back of this switch is very flat, and I'm just planning to just glue that plastic to the wood, and I think that'll be fine, and I'll put a front on here, and then I'll put some kind of a plate on here that I can screw up to the table. And I think we're more or less done. I'll do something with these wires to keep them up in here tight, but I'm not sure what yet. Maybe I should have made the box a little bigger. I'm not too worried about that part of it. So anyway, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to go ahead and glue this switch in. I'm just double checking to make sure I'm not going to cause a problem. You know, like I said, if this doesn't work, we throw it in the trash. This this 
this drill wasn't worth having anyway. So it, nothing ventured, nothing gained, nothing lost in the scheme of things here. I'm going to put CA glue on the back of this plastic and I'm going to just put it more or less all over this whole back with hopes that it will stick to the wood. Putting it where the switch is just a little below the surface there because I figure I'll put a cap above this and I don't want the sliding switch to get in the way of the cap there. I think we're good there. Now we'll just give it a test. Yes, I know this is 110 voltage, so you got to be careful. You got to know what you're doing. I've been shocked plenty of times in my life, so I'm totally familiar with this. And this could be another time where I get shocked. You never know. Okay, here's the drill. I'll just lay it here, and you can see. When I press it, it goes one way, flip the switch, and it goes the other way. So it does work. Now, it's going really fast, and there's no variable speed on this. Okay, that's going to be a problem. I may, I can solve it by one of two ways. I'll just put a tiny spindle on here. The drill will be turning fast, but because it'll be a tiny spindle, it'll wind slowly. So, that's my hope. And if we can just get away with that, that's all we'll do. If we have to run it from here, like a pulley from here to another pulley, I'll do that. But one way or the other, I'm going to get it done. Well, I made some more progress. I've got, as you saw, I've got that glued in to the little box. I made a cover for it, and the cover slides right up in there, and it keeps this from going sideways. So that, you know, it's tight enough that it goes, and it, but yet you can push it in and out, and it doesn't seem to catch on anything. And I, can, I still have room to flip my forwards and reverse. Seems like that's going to work fine. Let's before we glue that in, let's test it one more time to make sure it's still working here. Here's the drill. Pretty good. I like it. Okay, so we're going to just glue this bore in place too. Mm, my gosh, it's burning my eyes so much I can't see. Thank goodness it went right where it was supposed to because I couldn't see it. Golly, got me. That's the problem, and you know, people say use the CA glue for pore filler. Well, gee whiz, it would eat you alive, you know. And that, you know, like that 2P10, I mean, it's the same stuff. I mean, it's just super glue. And so, you know, you start spreading that all over a great big surface and it'll eat you alive. So I don't think that stuff's a real good option. I mean, it's great for small little sections and small little projects, but it's not great for a whole guitar, I don't think. Well, anyway, that's a side issue. This uh, seems to be glued on there really well. This is not made to be serviceable, guys. <laughs> if, you know, I'm assuming it's going to work forever. These old beater drills work forever. If it goes bad, we'll try something else, you know. I'm not building it to uh, work on it <laughs> and building it to or building it to repair or anything like that if you got that in mind you're thinking of the wrong guy here I'm going to try now to build a little box that can contain these wires fairly well and I'm not sure just how to do that yet I had cut some sheet metal earlier thinking that maybe I would use sheet metal on part of this but uh, I don't like the sharp edges on sheet metal and stuff. And you, I mean, I know you can put protection around that, but I think it's just easier just to use the wood in this case. So I think I'll cut me a piece of wood that will work with this. Nothing real fancy or complicated. I just made a little slide lid here that I'm just going to glue in place. It keeps the wires there. Very little room for anything to get in there now. Uh, you know, I could go a little more and make another piece to fill this, but it's not necessary. There's nothing that's going to get in there. So I'm perfectly happy with that. We've just got to get her glued in place. So let's do that. Again, it's not serviceable. I understand that.
Well, we got a pretty good box there, really. We've got a way to plug it in, and we've got control over it, and now it feels solid where nothing's going to break or anything. Let me double check it, make sure it's still working. Sure is. Perfect. Now I can, I've even got room there I can label up and down on either side by switching this to the up one side or the other, so that'll work real nice when I get her done. Well, I've made my top mounting board that will just sit on here like so, and we'll glue it and screw it to the base, to the rest of it. And then it's got two holes already drilled. I'll put two screws in there, through up through here to, into the overhang of the table, and that should work just fine. It's just out of my way enough that I don't think it's going to be in the way for anything. I have a little vise that I put on the table right here, and I had to put it right here because there's a little cut out there, and it's going to miss that, yet it'll be over here out of the way enough that, it, you know, I don't want it over here in this part of the table because I use a lot of clamps in this area. Over here, not so much. So I think I'll be fine if I put it right here, plus that's on my right side, so perfect for pushing the button. Got the glue on the board here already, and just ready to set her down in place. And use the last little bit of my accelerator here to make it happen. Now I'll put a couple of screws down through here just to make sure this is solid together where it won't come apart. I have one little concern with my design. Uh, with this being mounted up under the table like this, this is going to, like if this is the table, then this is sticking out from the edge of the table quite a bit. And I'm afraid somebody's going to walk into it and break it off or whatever. So I may actually glue a couple of wings on here that stick out the same distance as this to keep people from bumping this. And it still gives me access in here to, to work it, I think. Just a little bit of insurance that it won't get broke off. This is what that will, the guard will look like. And, uh, you know, somebody can still bang into that, but at least they won't be breaking the switch off. I think that'll probably work just fine. Gives me plenty of room to get in there and push the button and stuff, I think. I don't think that's going to be a problem. I can reach in and flip it still, no problem. And then just reach in there and push it with my thumb. So, I think I'll go ahead and put that on there just because I just know somebody will bang into it first day and break it off. Probably be me. Hopefully you guys uh, see the similarities to what I'm building here to something that uh, Matthias Wandel would build. And uh, he builds a lot of contraptions that are that look like things like that. <laughs> so I guess you'd say that that might have been what inspired this a little bit. But uh, the, what really inspired it is I just need a way to get rid of this hose. So I have I started putting on the thinking cap, and I feel like this is going to work, and I think it's going to work pretty well. But now I've got to turn my attention to this side. This is going to go back toward the wall, which is behind us here. And so this has got to go back over to the wall, down the wall, and under the table. And this has got to be up, mounted up on the ceiling. So now I have to figure out a way, and I want to keep it in this orientation because that just gets the cord going in the right direction. And I just want to think of a way now to mount this up in this orientation. And then this will be the thing that... Out here we can worry about this part later where we uh, reel up the line. I have to be careful that I'm working off the right side of this when I mount this. I'm, I've got a piece of sycamore here that's two inches thick and it's heavy duty piece that I have plenty of room that I could screw this into something else. So I'm not worried about that part yet. I'm just worried about getting it this attached to this block. I can always attach this block to something else easily. So, but here's the problem, this rocks and everything. So what I'm going to do is I'll chuck up a straight piece of steel here, like a drill bit or something, put a level on it. This table is pretty darn level, so I'm not, you know, I'm thinking we can use that as our reference. And then that way we'll get this fairly straight and plumb. I can drill a hole the rest of the way through here. There's nothing in the way. I can use that to put a bolt through or screw or something and put a spacer under here to level it. I think I can drill a hole through here and do the same thing. I can also, if I need to, chisel out a little bit here, but I'm, th I'm kind of thinking I want to leave that and maybe even raise this up so that there's airflow around this. Um, I was thinking about chiseling it out and 
mounting it down in there, but then it wouldn't give good airflow. So I'm going to, if anything, hold it up a little bit off of the t off of the uh, mounting plate here. But I just have to find a good way to hold it structurally. I can maybe even use a band clamp if I need to once I get these other things figured out. Now I'm not so sure about this one here. This hole I think must have been for putting something in there to hold it, but uh, it doesn't have any threads or anything and it's just a blind hole. It doesn't go all the way through. To play it safe, I think I'll try to drill it first with a little tiny drill and see if it goes through without hitting anything. <laughs> you know, we could the whole thing could go south right here. If it does, oh well, I've wasted some time. Not out much money. Well, that didn't seem like it hit anything. Uh, a little weird to drill through that, but uh, I think we're okay. Uh, just to, to be sure, let's plug her in and test her out again. Yep, I think it's still working fine, so I don't think we hurt anything. I'm trying to decide if I want to try to take that to a full quarter inch bit like the other one. It would make it a lot easier if I could. We'll see what happens. Because we're drilling into some angled plastic here, so I'm not sure this is going to work real well. I'm okay with that. I think that worked fine. Yeah, I think it did. So I think we're good. Okay, so now we have a quarter inch bolts that we can play with here. Work with our leveling at least, I think. Should be able to do a pretty good job with that, I think. I've got a transfer punch in the hole here. Uh, this is all wiggly wobbly, so it's hard to decide where it should be located. It's, uh, I don't think any of the holes are perfectly perpendicular. This one's pretty close, but this one's not. I'm not sure how to go about this. I think I'll knock this one in place first. kind of stuck there a little bit and I'll just take this put it down through the hole and while well, that one's stuck there and try to drill a little bit down in there that one wasn't perfectly perpendicular that's why I went ahead and drilled it by hand this one should be pretty close so I'm going to drill this one with the drill press I've got the one that's not perfectly square in, our, in the hole, and now I'm going to see if I can just get lucky and get this one to go in. And then I'll have to make these fit flush inside the deal, but at least I think I can get it together. So I'll go ahead and mount these up in their flush so that I can set this flat on the table. I have those mounted up in there. You can see they're countersunk. And now let's see if we can get lucky and get this back on here, which, well, yeah, it's going. Not too bad. Not too bad. Not too shabby. All right. You know, it ain't, it ain't perfect. I can tell it's kind of funky. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it in the air like that. I'm going to have to find some kind of a spacer underneath this one specifically. This one I think I can use a, a just a, a nut. I could use one on this one too, but this one's going through it's going through the plastic at a big angle. So I'm going to get a round, maybe a wooden spacer I'll just make to take up some more room back in here. I think that'll work better than anything else I can think of. Just put this little block on here. As far as I can tell, it's going to be out of the way enough and let air flow both. So I think it's going to be just about perfect. And we're going to see here about getting it back on here. And that locked down real good. Now, um, actually I should have put my nut on this one here first and screwed it down because this one's going to have a different height and I can adjust this one. And we hopefully would have a nut on top of this one. Oh, I 
just about out of room on that one. Boy, I tell you, <laughs> I might have to make my block just a hair shorter. I think I will, just because I don't have full threads. Well, you just trial and error. That's all you can do with this kind of stuff. So I just need to cut about a, all the width of that nut off of this, top of this. While I was at it, I just would have had him bevel this off a little bit. This will give a little bit more air clearance just with that little bevel and round it off some of the corners. Um, I think it's going to be real good now. I think we're going on here maybe for the last time. That's pretty solid, really. I don't think it would need any more than that. I don't really see why I'd need a strap or anything. That really does feel very solid. And, you know, we're not lifting a ton of weight here, just a vacuum hose, so I think we're plenty solid there. I'm really kind of impressed with that. Now, let's just see again, does it still work? You know, have I screwed up anything? It's looking pretty good. I think we're just about in business. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I've chucked up just a bolt here. Uh, you know, it's you know, they're never a hundred percent straight, but it's pretty good. I checked it as best I can, and then I had to put a little filler space here because there's a head on the bolt. And boy, I mean, it's like right on the money. <laughs> so, you know, I got a pretty good eye, I guess, and that that really is right on the money. So, I guess I'm just gonna tighten everything down. That's pretty close. That's close enough for this job. As you can see, I've got the drill hanging off the end of the workbench here. I've got it all mocked up. We'll just measure three feet. That's about the distance to the floor, roughly. I'm just going to put some tape around here and just see how fast it rolls up three feet. And then we'll have some kind of idea whether it's too fast, too slow, whatever. I'm pretty sure it's going to be too fast, but I don't know. We'll see. Whoa! Well, that was very fast. <laughs> Which I expected it to be fast. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I it's pretty much what I expected, but... Uh, that's probably going to be too fast. I don't know. Maybe not, because i got a long ways to go, and it it's kind of nice to get it done in a hurry. <laughs> Ain't nothing left to do it but to try it out and see if that's too fast. I think that's just too crazy fast. I should have unwound it the same way, but I didn't. That was kind of dumb. Well, let me wind it up again, just to see. <laughs> That wasn't too terribly bad, really. I mean, you know, you, gotta, you have to stop it in time, otherwise it goes the other way. <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice if it was variable speed where I could control it better. I think it's going to do my job, though. I just got to get used to using it. I think I'm going to try to get it mounted and uh, start doing some testing. Well, I got her all mounted up and let's see how it works. Well, I think you can see that's the hose and all this stuff here hanging way up there. and I, It's about eight, almost eight feet. I can reach almost eight feet, so it's up pretty high. And I've got it on the down deal right now, so if I push the button, it'll come down. You see it comes down pretty fast. Just push it a couple times and it's down. So when it's down, it's hanging just about camera height here as where I keep my camera mounted so you can see the bottom of it here. And then I can just take it off of the little rack that I made. Then I can use my hose as much as I need to. When I'm ready to put it away, I just can uh, wrap the hose around this little doomahickey do here. And like something like that so I know it's not going to come off. And flip my lever to up. And just hit it a couple times like that. And you can see it's up pretty high already. It's up about, the bottom of it's about 6'6". Six, six. I'm going to go up a little bit more with it. And now it's up about 8 feet high again.
success. It gets my vacuum hose out of my way and just a touch of a button, it's right here where I need to use it. So, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for taking a look. Thank you.